Well, it's the weekend, and of course, as always, bad pennies always keep turning up, and in this case, it's Michael Snyder with his Culture Blast movie reviews. Hi there, Michael. Hi, Alex Bennett. How you doing, buddy? I hear that music, and I want to do the Charleston. Is there something wrong with me? I don't know. I'm still trying to find a decent theme for this, but I'm lazy. I like the cool jazz one we did a couple weeks ago, but, you know, whatever whatever works. But, uh, hey, it's uh, movie time. It's uh, culture time. Uh, you can obviously hear this uh, on the Great American Broadcast, and you can also check it out uh, at YouTube under the Michael Snyder well, great, channel. Great American so, Broadcast Network, GabNet. Call, call it what you will. Yeah. Oh, it is your thing, so yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, also at Michael Snyder's Culture Blast Facebook page, and mm-hmm. follow me on Twitter, at Culture Blaster. And we, we've got movies, we've got a blockbuster. It's so early in the year. And, uh, you know, some people say, yes, sir. I say, Noah. I mean, oh, my God. And I and the first part of his name is pretty much my reaction to the film. Man, God, Flood, the epic biblical tale told by filmmaker Darren Aronofsky, the guy who made Requiem for a Dream, which I love, uh, among other films, but has made a couple of clinkers. Well, well, he made The Black Swan, and he uh, also made The Wrestler. He did some good films recently. Oh, wonderful films. I mean, the guy has made some terrific movies. Um, And then he may have made the biggest career misstep of his life with this. Um, it's, well, wasn't there uh, wasn't there something some big spectacular thing that he did with a lot of graphics and CGI uh, and stuff that was a complete failure? Yeah, it was a. Uh, it, it starred um, Hugh Jackman and Rachel Weisz, and they lived in a bubble, and I can't remember the name of it, but it was a uh, much earlier in his career, and it was a stiff, and then he went back to making more personal movies. Yeah, or maybe that was the most personal of all. You know, a vanity project. I'm, I'm Forgive me, I can't remember the name of it because it was it was not that good. But if that was a clinker, Noah is a clunker. So mm-hmm. Russell Crowe, everybody's favorite short-tempered uh, hooligan, plays Noah. Mm-hmm. Jennifer Connelly is his wife. Ray Winstone is the vile Tubal Cain. Anthony Hopkins is Methuselah. And boy, there's some genius casting there. He damn, damn straight, he's Methuselah. And uh, Emma Watson is in this thing as... Uh, as the wife or uh, girlfriend of one of uh, uh, Noah's sons. And, and this whole thing is pretty laughable. You know the basic story. You know, God wants to cleanse the earth of wickedness as the sons of Cain go bonkers. And Noah, of course, is the only decent and noble uh, man left on earth. And his family is going to survive the flood by building an ark. So saith the Lord. Anyway, uh, this is uh, portentously epic with a very leaden, grandiose score. Where every time you hear the, the gigantic uh, orchestral explosion, your eyes automatically roll. And, um, you know, there's a prequel here where they're telling the story of the Bible up to Noah. And it looks like it came from a Sunday school educational film produced by Mel Gibson, Mark Burnett, and the PTL Club. I mean, it really is pretty bogus. And then you've got, I, I swear to God, Noah does not build this ark with just his hands and his son's help. There are rock creatures with angels on the inside. And uh, I don't think there's anything about cubits. Remember, there's got to be six cubits or 20 cubits long. Uh, I don't hear the word cubit. There's a goth girl amongst the sons of Cain who gets crushed in a stampede. And and again, Hermione from Harry Potter, uh, Emma Watson, gets to scream a lot while giving birth. And then Tubal Cain, this is my favorite moment. Ray Winstone has snuck aboard the Ark. Oh, spoiler alert. And he's hungry, so he pulls an Ozzy by biting the head off a live rat. And at the very end, there's more rainbows than the Castro, West Hollywood, and Christopher Street put together. And then outtakes from some like Disney True Life Adventure about animal husbandry. I mean, literally, my eyes were rolling throughout the entire thing. People must have thought I was playing dice. And, um, you know, uh, maybe I'm overreacting. You got uh, Noah's three sons, Mo, Larry, and Shemp, uh, and, uh, and the bad boy. Actually, uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the bad boy is played by Logan Lerman, best known as Percy Jackson. This thing is just a goat rodeo. And there's, of course, two goats available, and they're on the ark. Uh, Noah, oh, my God. Wow. Well, that's about as bad as I've heard you say anything is all year. Well, it's just so much money on screen, and it's just, it's, it's, well, you know what? I'll tell you what, I laughed a lot. 
uh, and I laughed to myself because I didn't want to disturb the people uh, in the the screening, which was on one of the it was, it was on the Paramount lot, the historic Paramount lot, which I love. Uh, going there is like for me going to Disneyland. So you want to be respectful, but I caramba. Okay, um, sabotage uh, is the latest uh, movie starring the former governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the. The one he did right out of the box when he got freed from Sacramento, The Last Stand, directed by a Korean action director, I thought was great. I totally enjoyed it. This thing is done by um, a much more um, kind of conventional American uh, production team. And it's directed by David Ayer, who yeah. uh, I think co-wrote uh, or wrote uh, Training Day. And I expected to, this to be at least as good as The Last Stand. Um, it's about a, a DEA team, an elite task force that mm -hmm. goes after the drug cartels, and uh, they decide they're going to pull a, big, a bit of a heist. And when that goes, uh, when they do this uh, attempt at a heist, from that point on, the DEA elite team members begin dying one by one, like ten little Indians, or and then there were none. But it, it's vulgar. It's it's kind of ridiculous in, in some points it's it's terribly violent which doesn't bother me if it's to the you know the interest of, of a story and, and done in an artful way and there are some interesting set pieces but the problem here is this is like a z movie with arnie up front his supporting cast who actually have as much screen time generally as he does includes some of my favorite actors terence howard josh holloway joe manginello the great Murray enos from um, the killing on amc olivia williams harold perrineau and Sam Worthington from Avatar. They're all members of the team, and they're all playing thuggish. And, um, you know, I went in excited, loved the first half hour. Then I thought the script was spinning its wheels, and kind of like the last Die Hard, it went so over the top that it was silly, mm -hmm. including all the motivations and characterizations. Uh, you know, bargain matinee at best. Mm -hmm. And um, The Raid 2, much better action film. Uh, the Raid was a, a phenomenal uh, an unexpected pleasure from, of all places, uh, Indonesia. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a movie that was about a rookie cop who um, ends up in the middle of a firefight in a building filled with drug lords and their accomplices. And uh, it ex a very exciting film. And it ended up spawning similar movies uh, in other countries. And now, finally, uh, there's a sequel from uh, the original guys who made the film uh, in Indonesia, a writer-director named Gareth Evans. Mm -hmm. uh, sees it and none of the uh, actors would be familiar to anyone but uh, our hero ends up going uh, uh, I guess you uh, call him uh, a double agent he ends up getting involved with the gang itself to try to destroy it from within you know and uh, th this stuff is great I mean the raid too um, if you see the if you see the first one and like it you should check out the raid too I really really got a kick out of it and, and it's violent and ridiculous too but uh, it doesn't seem like you know, that movie Sabotage, I think it should have been called Career Sabotage for a lot of those actors. The Raid 2, not so much. It's it's the low stakes and lots of fun. Um, I do want to mention a, a more serious film. You know, I, I hate to do this when we're having so much fun with the uh, with action and, and, and epics, but Breathe In is the second collaboration between the writer-director of Like Crazy, uh, Drake Doremus, and Like Crazy was one of the best films I've ever seen about uh, young love and, and what happens to, uh, to romance uh, when you're just starting out as an adult. And this film also features the lead actress from Like Crazy, Felicity Jones, British girl, a wonderful actress, and this drama involves a British exchange, uh, exchange student in New York and what happens uh, to her host family when she and the father of the host family start making eyes at one another, as they used to say. Guy Pierce plays the dad, Amy Ryan plays the mom, the actors are wonderful. Um, this may not be everyone's cup of tea, maybe it's a chick flick to some. I thought it was powerfully done and uh, very well executed. And, and this guy, uh, Drake DeRamis, is a talented mm -hmm. man, and I thought Felicity Jones was uh, as good as can be, and Guy Pierce matches her uh, note for note. Kyle McLaughlin in supporting role. Finally, I want to mention Cesar Chavez, the biopic about the Hispanic labor activist, directed by one of the uh, uh, top young actors in Mexico, uh, Diego Luna, who, along with uh, his pal Gael Garcia Bernal, broke through in Itumama Tambien. They've done a lot. they've done American films, they've done you know Europe stuff, and he decided to make this biopic about the Hispanic labor activist, starring Michael Pena 
as Cesar Chavez, who led uh, all the organizations among the farm workers, uh, you know, 30, 40 years ago. And uh, America Ferrara plays his wife, Rosario Dawson, uh, plays Dolores, uh, Dolores Suerta, who is an important figure in the movement. And John Malkovich is the evil grape grower. Uh, and, uh, you know, it means well, but it was a little it was a little stiff for me, a little by the numbers biopic stuff yeah. and uh you know too dry basically mm -hmm. uh and that's what we have in terms of new films uh what's up at your end i know you mentioned gail uh what's his name uh, bernard gail garcia bernal uh, he is in a, a tv series uh which uh, amazon has been running as a pilot uh called mozart in the jungle loved it uh, yes and I just want to recommend it to everybody. It's just, uh, I hope uh, Amazon picks it up because I want to know what's going to happen to these people. Uh, it's that good. Uh, and it's on a subject that I guess has never, ever been covered by any TV series. So it's, nope. you know, about New York Symphony Orchestra. Uh, I, really, I really love the, the outgoing conductor who's kind of being kicked upstairs is played by Malcolm McDowell and... Um, and uh, Barnal plays the young Turk who has all these radical ideas about conducting. I, I thought you, I agree with you. I thought it really had so much promise and such an unlikely topic. And, and it takes an Amazon or a Netflix to finance a movie, a uh, TV series well, like that. Well, what's happening to HBO? This would have been something that would be perfect for HBO. You know? Are you there? Yeah. 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 Uh, it would have been perfect for HBO. But. You know, a lot, a lot of things have gone by HBO. I mean, Mad Men slipped by HBO. Uh, I'm trying to remember something else that uh, uh, passed by HBO. Uh, well, episode, episodes went to Showtime. Uh, the Borgias uh, seemed like an HBO show on uh, Showtime. Yeah. Did There's you ever? Did you, did you ever see the uh, other Borgia called the Borgias? That was the, uh, same, uh -huh. same title. It, uh, no, it was not called Borgias. It was called The Borgias. Or maybe this was The Borgias and the other one is Borgias. But in any yeah, event, I got into that. It's pretty damn good. It was made by the guy uh, here in America who does, uh, oh, God, I'm trying to remember what else he's done. Um, but it, it, it really, uh, I thought, was a very good, uh, very good show, too. But well, it, the Jer Jeremy yeah. Irons thing was a guilty pleasure. There was yeah. scenery chewing and yeah. wild sex and violence, and you know, I, I, I love. I don't it, know if we mentioned this either, but Ripper Street fans there are going to be more Ripper Streets. Uh, that uh, it's been picked up by God. I'm trying to remember who uh, somebody like uh, Amazon or Netflix, but it wasn't Netflix, and they're going to do more of them. Oh, it was, it was Stars, I think, it's, and it's going to be in conjunction with the BBC as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and uh, uh, hey, look, um, I'm holding my breath till Orphan Black comes back to be. You know, I, I watched the first like five episodes. That I think bored the living crap out of me. Loved it. Totally got into it. Yeah. That, that girl Tatiana Maslany is remarkable. But anyway, that's you know chocolate and vanilla maybe. Yeah. No, maybe it's a good taste versus bad taste. That can be. How too. dare you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's that's about it at this end. Uh, did, did you and, you mentioned uh, bad words last week, right? I did. I yeah. thought it was very funny. Yeah, a lot of people are saying good things about it. Anyway, hey, uh, thank you so much, Michael. Wait a minute, play a little bit of the theme. Why, why, why shouldn't we, huh? Uh, and uh, say goodbye to you, and, and thank you very much. Tell them where they can uh, catch up with you. Again, you can hear this uh, eventually on YouTube. You can check out the Michael Snyder Culture Blast uh, Facebook page and follow me at Twitter at Culture Blaster. Thanks, buddy. Okay, thanks, Michael. We'll see you next week. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>